Okay. Uh, this will be a network security overview where we'll talk about firewalls and IDS and IPS and CIM. Someone has asked a question for previous session. Uh, Saurav, could you answer them on the back channel over the chat, chat and I can continue over this. Nagesh ji, uh, sorry to stop here for questioning because we are running short of time and we have to call for uh, lunch also. And you are our external uh, Experts are also in queue. So, uh, Swara will answer you in the back channel. Meanwhile, I'll continue with this firewalls. Yeah, the uh, goal for today is introduction, uh, then firewalls and its types, introduction to IDS and IPS, role of SIM. Uh, then uh, I'll show you a demo of firewall. In fact, in our uh, groups, we have found some questions that people are asking that we should do for the six uh, uh, demonstration before going into D. So I'll uh, give a demo of firewall, what you can do. So. Let's just start. So, what do you think how internet performed in 2020? You see that in 2020, in a single minute, what is the communication people have done? This is a very recent survey data. And you see that in a single minute, on an average, 1.3 million Facebook logins were done, 4.1 million Google searches were done, around 7.64 lakh hours of videos are being watched in a single minute. Around 4.7 millions of videos are viewed. See, so much things are going on. And you, we all experienced lockdown. You know, and lockdown scenario, it was a very golden opportunity for cyber criminals. You see, top 10 international victim countries for 2020 were these. And our country was third in list. They have uh, not counted USA because USA is the first country. So apart from USA then, first is Britain, Canada, and then India. So so many attacks have been going on in Indian scenario, Indian websites. So why these attacks? What are the challenges for cybersecurity? Cybersecurity has inherent vulnerabilities that cannot be removed, innumerable entry points to the internet, assigning attribution internet technology makes it relatively easy to misdirect attribution to other parties, Computer network defense techniques, tactics, practices largely protect individual systems and network rather than critically operation missions. Attack technology, outpacing defense technology. Nation states, non state actors, individuals are at peer level. Okay, so these are the various challenges which cybersecurity faces. Evolution of cybersecurity, viruses uh, in 1990, when viruses came, we come up with antivirus, firewalls. In 2000s, worms came, uh, we come up with intrusion detection and prevention. Late 2000s, botnets came, we came up with application firewall scene. Then APTs came, current advanced uh, persistent threats, insider threats, 
we came up with network flow analysis. So we are just behind this. Line. So what we need is we need for integrated network security solutions. What were our traditional techniques? We used to filter gateways for IPs. We used to have proxies and we had the combinations of them. So what we had there was a network checkpoint here and this was our network. And from outside this checkpoint used to stop or allow the communication. Then our network increased the expanded what happened? We have some remote offices, telecommunication offices, roaming users, partners, bandwidth increased, technologies increased. So it has, you see in this diagram, what I'm trying to represent is the complexity of network has increased several times. Okay, so challenges are also increased. So these single checkpoints, these were not means they are not capable to handle all kinds of attacks. Okay. What are the risks and countermeasures? Discover the attraction, threat, vulnerabilities, probabilities. And we have to countermeasure, prevent, detect, react. Every day, new processes are being transformed into electronic prompts, new vulnerabilities and patches emerge, event log must be analyzed, appropriate actions must be taken. As a consequence, security is a process. Services serve better than products. Expert teams specialized in security are needed. Some processes may be outsourced internally. So here, the role of firewall comes. So what is a firewall? You see, if you recall your earlier diagram, you see that the firewall, at every entry point, we have a firewall. Entry or exit point, we have a firewall. What are firewall? Effective means of protecting a local system or network of system from network-based security threat while affording access to outside world via internet. The firewall is inserted between premises network and the internet. It aims to establish a control link, protect the premises network from internet-based attacks, provide a single choke point. Now, in this is a technical. Okay, what do you, we understand as a layman's term? Firewall, it can be represented as a gatekeeper of your office premise. So, gatekeeper or the security guard at your office premise, he is allowing the person whom he thinks or being, uh, he is being uh, deputed, he has been asked to allow, are being allowed inside your office. Unwanted persons are stopped at the gate. Similarly, unwanted network connections are stopped at the network perimeter. Firewalls control the flow of network traffic. Firewalls have applicably in network uh, where there is no internet connectivity. Firewalls operate on number of layers, can also act as a VPN gateway. Active control filtering technologies. You see, firewall is sitting in between your private network, right? There are four general techniques of a firewall. Service control, directional control, user control, behavior control. Service control determines the type of internet service that can be accessed, inbound or outbound. Filter traffic based on IP address and TCP ports provides proxy service servers that receive interpreted services request before it passes passed on. Direction and control determine the direction in which particular service requests are allowed to flow. User control controls the access to service according to which user is 
attempting to access it. Typically applied to users inside firewall perimeter can be applied to the external users by using secure authentications. Behavior control controls how particularly some services are being used. Firewall may allow only a portion of information on local web server to an external user. It defines a single choke point to keep unauthorized users out of your protected network. It prohibits potentially vulnerable service. It provides protection. It also monitors security related events. Audits and alarms are generated. The firewall is a convenient platform for several internet functions. The firewall can serve as a platform for other services like IPsec and VPN. There are a few limitations also. However, firewall cannot protect against any attack that bypass the firewall. Means, suppose you inside you are inside an organization, you have a firewall in that organization, but you you used to have a dongle to connect your laptop. So your laptop won't be protected by this firewall. Okay, this is called an internal threat. Firewall can't protect against tunneling. Suppose somebody is using a VPN from inside that one, firewall cannot protect. There are types of firewall. Three common types of firewall, packet filtering, circuit level gateways, application level gateways. Okay, there is one more stateful multi-layer. What are packet filtering? As you may recall, Earlier in the first day, I've shown how pack, uh, data is divided and how packets are being transferred. So these packets, those packets, firewall will inspect them and check whether these packets are allowed or not. Depending upon the rules set by the administrator, firewall will allow a packet or drop a packet. Drop means it will stop a packet. Okay. You see, here the firewall works on the third layer. Traffic is filtered based on the specific rule, includes source and destination address, packet types, port numbers. Okay. Then there are advantages of this type of firewall. They are simple, they are transparent, they are of high speed. Disadvantages, difficulty of setting up packet filter rules, lack of authentication. What happens uh, when you try to uh, write the rules? there will be hundreds and hundreds of uh, rules and huge number of rules will be there at end of uh, maybe year or two you will end up with having 2000 to 3000 numbers of rule blocking packet blocking packet allowing so it becomes a bit difficult for managing the rules okay there is no authentication if rule matches it is allowed if rule not match it is not allowed Possible attract appropriate countermeasure. If you change the IP address, as Saurabh told you, that IP address can be spoofed. So if you change the IP address, uh, the rule, it will uh, allow that rule. Okay. So these are few uh, attacks. See, this is a simple uh, type of firewall rule, how we implement a rule, packet filtering. Suppose we write from computer, this is the one rule, each line is a rule. From server A to server, uh, from A to server one, for particular this IP address, source IP address, means this is the source IP address of A, to destination IP address is this, means this is the destination IP address of server. On particular protocol, TCP protocol, on source port, when A is trying to connect above 1023 number of ports, you see we have around 65,000 ports. So any connection which is being communicated from one to second on ports higher than, initiating ports is higher than 1023, on port 23, port 23 of that server means it's a telnet port. Port 23 is defined for telnet. So for a telnet port, any connection which is originating at a level higher than 1023 number of ports 
connection setup is yes it means allowed from time 7 am to 6 pm only after that it is not allowed on mondays to fridays and the reverse you see the reverse of that connection means from a to b, a to server 1 it is allowed from server 1 to a on a reverse port it is not allowed okay you have to understand this there are two types of communication one is inbound one is outbound first one is inbound connection to server 1 it is allowed second one is out inbound connection to computer a so that is not allowed However, an outbound connector from server A, server 1 to A is stopped. Understood? Then there is uh, another type is circuit level gateways. These are stand level, standalone systems, specialized function performed by an application level gateway, set up two TCP connections. The gateway typically relays TCP segments from one connection to another without examining the container. It means the route is being allowed. If you are on that particular route, you will be allowed. Right. Traffic is filtered based on the specific session rules, such as when a session is initiated by a recognized computer, it is allowed. If it is uh, initiated by an unrecognized computer, it is stopped. It works on the level 4 TCP level of the protocol stack. The security consists here, uh, security function consists of determining which connections will be allowed, typically use a situation in which system administrator trusts the internal users. An example is a soft spec. You see what I have told in a circuit that this circuit is allowed. So inside connection, outside connection, it is allowed. From inside both way connection, from outside both way connection. Okay. Then application layer gateway. These type of firewalls are usually called proxy servers. They act as a relay of application level traffic. They work on the level five application layer of the protocol stack. Advantages, they have a higher security than packet filters. Only needs a scrutinized few allowable applications. Easy to log and audit all traffics. They have a disadvantage, additional processing overhead on each connection means you need to give very high processing power to this fire type of firewall. They are very resource hungry because they are checking each application and all. Okay. Then there is a mix of a firewall state that is a stateful firewall. Stateful multi-layer uh, multi inspection firewall combine the aspects of other three types of firewall. They filter packets at uh, network layer, determine whether session packets are legitimate and evaluate the contents of packets at the application layer. Okay. Traffic is filtered at three levels here. See, the performances of the fire, different types of firewall. If you see a packet filtering firewall speed is very high flexibility is high intelligence is low because it cannot know whether uh, whatever rule is set by administrator it will follow that application level firewall speed is low flexibility is low but they are intelligent enough stateful infection speed is good flexibility is good they have some built-in intelligence circuit level gateways they have a very low speed, they have very less flexibility, they have less intelligence. Okay. There are a few uh, means architecture, how we place a firewall inside a uh, network. Let me go directly to that. You see this example here, what we are having is, uh, this architecture is called screened host firewall system. Here, screened host firewall system is a single home based in configuration. It is placed, you see, this is our internet. This is a router from which we are connected. And this part, this part, let me take this. Point, and this part is our internal network, right? 
now this internal network is connected in a single network, in a single backbone this backbone is shared by your firewall host your normal host all are sharing this backbone now some data are being all the data the main gateway data is your firewall right now what happens as gateway internal gateway is uh, this firewall is made we made this firewall as our internal gateway so it processes everything and it is relays to, to the outer router but here there is a possibility that this user may change anything and he can come directly to here and it and this firewall will not know right using the same chain so we have a bit better option available this is called clean host firewall with dual home bastion host now what we have done what we have done is we have changed this scene so my backbone is split and here there is a separation it is a better of system so every system will every communication will come through this host and it will then come to that so firewall have a control of that particular channel right then suppose we have a private network we have a private network this is our internal lan and this network out of this is outside our office premises so in that kind of scenario we have a screen subnet firewall system most secure communication of three or we can have a private department inside our office lan which is doing some sensitive more sensitive work which cannot be disclosed to these users also so we can have a, this kind of system okay uh firewall products what are the firewall products available in market software based firewall iss server ip tables komodo zone alarm these are the sort of software based there are few appliance based firewall cisco fix checkpoint sonic wall watchguard integrated products are available open and closed source firewall ipw mod security pf sense okay now I'll talk a bit about your uh, ids so somebody in their questions they have asked what is an ids an ids is a monitoring system that detects suspicious activity and generates alerts when they are detected there are two kind basically two kinds of ids one is host based ids another one is network based ids so what is host based and what is network based a host based ids is deployed on a particular endpoint and designed to protect it against internal and external threats means this if this is a host there will be a ids will be there such an ids may have a ability to monitor network traffic to and from the machine and observe running processes and track the logs a host based ids visibility is limited to its host machine decreasing the available content for the decision making but has deep visibility into the computer's internet right however when we talk about a network based ids solution is designed to monitor entire protected network it has a visibility into traffic flowing through the network and make determiners based packet meet metadata and contents this wider viewpoint provides more context and ability to detect widespread threats however this system lacks visibility into internals of the endpoints that they are protecting then there are another two kinds of uh, ids one is signature based and one is anomaly based now what is a signature based ids signature based ids relies on pre programmed list of known attack behavior this behavior triggers an alert 
these signatures can include subject lines and attachment of email known to carry viruses remote logins in violation of organization policy and certain byte sequences right and there are few anomaly based plus uh, ideas anomaly based ideas begin with model of normal behavior on network then alert and admin anything it detects any deviation from that model of normal behavior an lv ideas begins at installation with a training phase where it learns normal behavior means we train the ideas that these are the behaviors are normal ai and machine learning has been very effective in this phase of an lv based systems then uh, we can have a hybrid kind of a system where you see this is a hybrid kind of a system input stream signature based i detection of malicious behavior based on publicly available signature if it is yes it goes here if it is no then it goes to another idea is detection of malicious behavior based on local network automation okay so if there is a no then it is a normal traffic if it is a yes then it is a malicious behavior you understand so it's a hybrid kind of system then we talked about uh, basics of uh, detection now let's talk about basics of prevention system so similarly these are also similar but these system uh, ips system is a monitoring system that detects suspicious activity and generates alert when they are detected you see identify suspicious activity log it attempt to block intrusion or limit damage report in in intrusion attempts here also we have network and behavior based network based intrusion prevention system and uh, network behavior analysis as name suggests network based intrusion prevention system all events on your network are being uh, means recorded and in behavior it is also similar to network intrusion prevention system but unlike in uh, nips uh, nva operates on anomalies like anomaly based ideas nva requires a training phase where it learns from networks based norms okay you see in case of our uh, network the ips is sitting in between our network perimeter and outside network perimeter and inside network perimeter it is sitting inside the firewall and the router right there are some wireless based fire prevention system I have two components including overlay monitoring uh, and integrated monitoring combining these two uh, which is very common is known as hybrid monitoring there are host based uh, intrusion prevention system also so what is the difference between ips and ids ids is a detection and monitoring tools that don't take any preventive action on their own however ips is a control system which can detect and take a preventive action on the based on the rule set ips you can say it's a control system however ids is a you can say it's a monitoring system right why ids and ips are critical surely for automation compliance policy enforcement very required you are getting automated monitoring you are automated compliance by using ips policy enforcement are there so these are critical then there is a new term that is called sim security information and event management uh, today i am going bit fast but as uh, the time is limited i have to show some uh, demo also so that's why i'm going fast please uh, 
don't mind and uh, if we have uploaded these uh, slides into the website you can have a look on it. sim is a process that helps cyber security implementation by gathering security related information example the log collection at centralized location or tags those information uh, at the edge and use this information for identification of anomalies which indicate breaches of security infrastructure of an enterprise so what happens what is sim sim you can say is a bigger brother of ips with the facilities of ids and uh, live reporting right what are the components here yeah components are log collection log analysis event correlation log forensics it compliance application log monitoring object access auditing real time alerting user activity monitoring dashboards reporting file integrity system device log monitoring log retention means every log every log whatever your devices are generating you are collecting every log you are storing them you are analyzing them if there is uh, any uh, threats or vulnerabilities you this system is generating alerts this system is generating a counter measures okay if something is new it is giving that report in that particular dashboard it is alerting the particular level of users to act uh, correspondingly for that level of alert okay so it's a big thing it's a big thing every data is being collected and real time real time alerting real time analysis is being handled sim works uh, by combining two technologies so security information management and security event management okay collection of data aggregation of data discovery detect threat identify the security breaches and investigate the alerts sim real time analysis of security alert generated by application and network uh, hardware what happens there is a event source then from that event source data is collected from all event source data is aggregated these are correlated for similar threats in the network then these are visualized alerts are generated these are analyzed these are reported and these are retained okay for future uh prevention so it actually threats and vulnerability management process sims can uh, uh, an visualize and uh, an the anomaly detection passing log normalization categorization visualization can aid in pattern detection protocol anomalies can be identified detect cover malicious communication and encrypted channel and it can also lead to detection of cyber warfare so sim and ids are generally used together to detect prevent enterprise x access or exposure of sensitive data here i am uh, today i am been able to just uh, give you the overview of firewall ids ips and sim okay so i'll stop here and i'll give you a demonstration i'll stop my screen here i'll again share i'll give you a demonstration of firewall meanwhile if you have any questions you can write in the chat box so we can answer i hope you are able to see my screen now let me show you some examples uh here in this example what i am going to do is now i have one computer here this is my 
computer, uh, command prompt of one computer. I have remotely logged in to an another computer. See remote desktop connection is done, right? And this computer, see the IP address is mentioned here. Now, what I'm doing is from this current machine, I'm trying to ping the remote machine. Okay, continuous. I'm ping. So this ping is going on. What is ping? Ping is a method by which in network scenario we can understand the whether that uh, other the target computer which whom I am pinging is live or not. Okay. Now in this computer, I don't want in there may be scenario, I don't want that somebody should know whether I am alive or not or my computer is switched on or not. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll open up in, I'll open up the firewall. How do I open up a firewall is this. I'll go to start, I'll write firewall, Windows firewall, I'm using a simple Windows firewall, okay. It will ask me to add some password. Sometimes it becomes very difficult to add password every time, but you must understand that this is the password which is saving our computer. Okay. So we must keep on changing the password and we always need to have a long and strong password. Now, this is the firewall setting. Right. Here, what I am doing here, still my computer is pinging. You see, it is pinging. Okay. Means, so I want to just stop this. Sorry. With half of it here, screen, half screen here. Okay. Now, in this machine, our target machine, I'll go to, I'll go to inbound rules. Here in bound rules, I'll try to find out a position, find out a rule. These are the lots and lots of rules are there. I try to find out a file and printer sharing eco request, ICMP version 4, incoming. See, in, it is written. So I'll double click here. So this rule will open. These rules are usually set by your computer. Otherwise, so what it is saying that allow the connection. Let me say I am blocking that connection. Okay, you see ping is going on currently. I am clicking apply. You will see what happens. The response changes. See. response changes it becomes request timed out means my firewall is now working and no reply is being sent and the center is unable to know whether my uh, computer the other computer is alive alive or not now just see i'll click here allow see what happens See, again, the reply started coming as I have changed it to apply. So this is the one thing how you can change the settings. Let me stop here. Now, I'll stop this machine. I'll come to my particular machine's firewall. Now, there are so many rules are written. Now, 
I'll show you an example of applica application level firewall. Now I see that my Firefox software is working. Let me write something. See, all the sites are working. Let me write. All the sites are working, but I want to stop the this rule. So I have created one. How do I create it? Let me first delete. Let me create a rule. When I click new rule from here, new rule from here, this place, new rule, type a program next. Let me this is the path my Firefox application is running. I say next. I'll say here what I've done, I have entered the name of the program. The name of the program is Firefox. Firefox. You see, name of the program is Firefox. Okay. So I've added, I'll block this connection from where for any anything for private public domain related connection for all connection i'll block it i'll give a name say firefox like ff and then finish now what happens i have created a tool ff and it has come here and with it block C. you see if i try to open msn now See, unable to connect. Okay, I've just stopped. Means this is stopped. However, if I see my Edge browser, it is working. See, means my internet is there. However, my, this application will not be able to communicate to the internet. Now I stop, I enable this rule, allow this connection, see here. You see, mission.com, enter, it will come, this, okay. Okay, one more. You see, in previous case, I have told you about inbound rule. Here, I have told you about outbound rule. Why? Inbound is whenever some connection is coming towards me. Outbound is whenever some connection is going out of me, from my computer. So here, I have placed the Firefox one at the outbound because the connection is generating from my computer. Okay, if I would have uh, uh, created this uh, particular rule in inbound, it would not be in any effect to this particular firewall. Now, suppose I want to block a particular website. As I was showing you, this was the site. NPTEL was our site. Right, this site is working normally. I want to block this site. How do I block it? First of all,
first of all, we have to find out the IP address of that particular website. How do I find the uh, IP address of that particular website? What is the process by which I can find out? There are a few questions have been passed. I'll, I'll answer to you, sir. Just let me show this example and I'll answer to you. See, to find out the IP address of this particular set, what I have to do is, I have to ping nptel.ac. Once I ping it, I'm not able to ping, but I got the IP address. This is one of the, this is one of, one of the thing. I can use ns look up command in see I have got an address here I can use another way traceroot trace root and detail.se dot these are the three ways I can know the IP addresses of a particular site. But just don't ask me the IP address of Google. There is a separate uh, concept about IP address of Google. That's why I'm going for a simple IP address. 14.139.60.170. So what I'll do, I'll create a rule from here in our firewall, in outbound rules create a new rule here i'll set a custom rule i'll go next all programs i'll select all program any program which is using this rule protocols any ports any from any port it can be initiated here i will write which ip address any ip address which ip address does the rule apply to means what is my destination address? Here I will write the IP address of NPTEL, right? Here I'll write the IP address of NPTEL. I've written next, I'll block this connection, okay? Next. I've named this NPT. Applied. Now, you see, I'll give one more example here. I've seen, given this NPTEL block. Now, this program is running NPTEL. So let me write. See, my access is blocked. Okay. Now, I just change it to allow. Again, my connection is restored. Now you see that I was having another NPTEL program with similar setting, with similar scope, everything was there. So it was allowed and this NPT, it was blocked. So one is blocked, one is allowed. However, my connection is in block. So what does it mean? It means that block command takes the preference. Okay, Some, if something is blocked in a rule, in previous rule, it cannot be unblocked until and unless I remove this block. Understood? Now, uh, I'll come back to questions because this ends my part of demo. I've shown you three demos, three rules which can be added to the firewall. Okay, so I'll take the questions. You may write in your questions to me. I'll try to solve. Uh, 
now uh, mr nargesh writes is windows depend defender works same as firewall too basically the concept of firewall which is given here in windows is similar to the concept of firewall which is available in the devices of uh, devices we get okay there is technically there is logically there is no problem so you may ask why do we need uh, another firewall also but the thing is scenario is different suppose we manage a network system of maybe suppose 100 plus computers now you have 100 computers and everybody in this network has stopped the icmp ping right what i have shown now what will happen our network Net, our network persons who are collecting the logs they are trying to see the infections they are trying to see which machine is alive which machine they will not get any information okay so you will say then we will disable the firewall for everyone okay you have disabled okay network which person is happy now what happens if i don't have a major firewall at our perimeter what will happen that your machine becomes vulnerable so we need a firewall at the network perimeter so if you are using a single computer then your windows firewall you configure it for the threats and vulnerabilities it is enough if you have a uh, office network then you need a standard firewall to be placed at the perimeter or at the perimeter of each sub network now Uh, okay. Another question. Can we see which page is open at the client? Client. Okay. Okay. You wanted to ask, can we see which page is open at the client? End? No, it can be seen. But you can know the if you analyze the logs of firewall, you can know whether. Uh, which kind of connections are active from the, that particular client but which page is open you have to analyze the logs of proxy and which page is currently open that cannot be uh, that may not be told uh, to you but maybe the these the number of pages open at that client can be told. okay sir inbound rules there is so many file printer sharing which one has we have to block okay see in inbound there are so many uh, files everything is there but everyone will have some different meaning you just you see just expand this okay now file share for icmp now you read file share file and printer sharing it will request icmp version 4 incoming next one is echo request icmp version 6 so currently uh, we all use icmp version 4 there are few organization who have shifted to icmp version 6 it version 6 so if your organization is using icmp version 6 then you use this icmp version 6 otherwise you use icmp version 4 whichever applies to your network okay everyone has a different name any other questions sir uh, request your participants on participation in asking the question because we get some feedbacks that the question, uh, whatever is shown are going ahead above the top of our head some people have asked so if you have any queries i request you kindly give us the feedback or give us ask the questions and our all our faculty members who are giving the sessions are uh, they will try to Uh, means they will try to solve your queries. Uh, one question from Nagesh again: If possible, take lecture on remote method. You know, 
innovations. Okay, we don't have a lecture on that. Uh, maybe in the next session, in the next session we'll try. So it's more than 1.30 also, it's a lunch time, high time. Next class is going to uh, is scheduled at two o'clock. So we'll have a half an hour break here uh, from here and we'll come back again. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience for listening me out. Thank you. We'll have half an hour lunch session. Post panel, please stop recording now.